dear friends good morning in the last class we saw the expression for pressure head or rise in pressure head capital h is equal to lv by gt when the closure of valve was gradual or slow i pointed out that we will come to know that 2l by c is the time even after one or two classes we will come across this 2l by c how we got it where c is the celerity of pressure wave l is the length of the pipeline and t is the time required to close the valve whether it is gradual if it is gradual or in order to say gradual t must be greater than 2l by c in order to say it is instantaneous or sudden or rapid t should be less than 2l by c where c is velocity of the pressure wave as i already said now instantaneous closure of valve in rigid pipes this also i mentioned in the last class itself under sudden closure of valve we have to consider two cases one when we are using rigid pipe in which the liquid is flowing that is water and the other case is elastic pipe now first we will see rigid pipe it is assumed here that whatever the pressure developed will not stretch the wall of the pipe that is the first and foremost assumption in case of rigid pipe whereas in case of elastic pipe it is assumed that due to increase in pressure because of the elastic property of the material of elastic pipe the walls will be get stretched therefore that elastic bulk modulus of elasticity of the material elastic material should also be taken into account while calculating the time required to close the valve okay with that brief introduction about these two difference of uh, rigid pipe and elastic pipe we will continue with only first case instantaneous closure of valve in rigid pipes equation of pressure indicates that when the valve is closed instantaneously that is t is equal to zero the inertia head should rise to infinity so it will not uh, happen in general case however in practice it is not quite possible to close the valve instantaneously as it always takes some time some time it cannot be zero thus even for a very rapid closure of the valve as observed during experimentation the pressure rise is quite finite and measurable moreover equation of pressure has been derived on the assumption that the liquid is incompressible this assumption is incorrect because at very high pressures even liquids get compressed to some extent and behave like compressible fluids that's why this is the phenomena of water hammer this is the phenomena of water hammer that water is also compressible consider a pipe of length l and area of cross section a already we have seen the figure carrying water which is flowing through it at a velocity v meters per second when the valve is closed instantaneously the kinetic energy of the flowing water is converted into strain energy of water here you have to take care about two highlighting words when the valve is closed instantaneously the kinetic energy of the flowing water is converted into strain energy of water neglecting the effect of friction and assuming the pipe wall to one loss in kinetic energy or loss of kinetic energy we know half mv squared where m is the mass of the fluid that is water half into mass is rho al multiplied by v squared whereas gain of strain energy or strain energy stored in water is equal to half of p square divided by k multiplied by volume half of p square by k multiplied by al where p is intensity of pressure wave produced k is bulk modulus of elasticity of water and then the equating the loss of kinetic energy to the gain of strain energy we get 
half rho al into v squared is equal to half p squared by k into al. If you rearrange these equations, here itself you can see a a will be get cancelled, l and l will be get cancelled, right, v squared and uh, v, uh, sorry, mm, p squared, v squared will remain, therefore, p squared is equal to, p squared is equal to here, this step, I was saying here, p squared is equal to, p squared is equal to half of rho a l v squared multiplied by 2k by al, if you rearrange this equation, we will get rho k v squared. Right? Now, instantaneous closure of uh, valve in rigid pipes. Further, we can reduce that equation. p is equal to, since it was p squared, now p is equal to under the root rho k v squared. Now, this v squared, we can take it outside v. Left with under the root k rho squared by rho, we can write uh, Multiplied by rho, rho under the root, rho multiplied by rho squared, multiplied by here v, v multiplied by under the root, we can write it as k rho squared divided by rho rho squared by rho and if you simplify you will get p is equal to v rho c y v rho c this rho squared, we can take it as rho outside. So, we will get V rho multiplied by under the root K upon rho. Where K upon rho, we know that celerity of pressure wave is under the root of K by rho. That's why it is simplified to P is equal to V rho C. Understood? V is velocity, rho is mass density of fluid and C is the celerity of pressure wave in meters per second. Next. Instantaneous closure of valve in elastic pipes. As I already pointed out, I need not have to repeat now. We have to consider the elastic forces also into account. That's why effective bulk modulus should be taken. We should not consider bulk modulus of elasticity of fluid alone in finding out the expressions. As shown in figure, consider a pipe of length, diameter D, thickness T. Why thickness is to be considered here? Because of the pressure increase, the walls will be get stretched. How much they will stretch? That is to be taken into account. That's why thickness also involved here. Small compared to the diameter. Let rho be the increase, p be the increase of pressure due to water h. E is modulus of elasticity of pipe material and 1 upon m Poisson's ratio for the pipe material. When the valve is closed instantaneously, rise of pressure takes place due to which circumferential and longitudinal stresses are produced in the pipe wall. These stresses are given from knowledge of strength of materials. We will stop here. We will continue in the next class because it will become overdose.